Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today is the day I'm going to set up my planner for the month of April. That means combining a bunch of different planners all into one. Let's go! All right, so every month I do something called Franken planning, which is combining multiple planners together. So this is my planner for the month of March. It's all together um, and I'm going to switch it out and I'm going to have this for March, but I kind of prep my April planner in advance, which is going to happen today. So what I'm going to do is be combining several different planners all together um, to make my ideal planner for the month of April and then decorating my April monthly spread. And I'm super excited because I'm going to use brand new stickers from the Happy Planner and they just give me all the feels. I love them. So if you want to check it out, then stay tuned. I will link everything that I end up using down below. Otherwise, let's go. All right, my first tip has to do with a comment that I get all of the time when I post videos like this. And um, it goes something like this. Someone will comment, if I were to purchase all of these planners, that would be $200 in planners, and that's not very practical, um, which I completely understand. You are completely right. Spending that much on a planner um, would be a lot for most budgets. My first tip for Franken planning is to start gathering your planners when they are on sale, on clearance. Um, for instance, the new Happy Planners just came out that start in July of 2023. Many of those planners will start going on sale, like on a deep discount um, at the end of June, beginning of July. And so you can pick up those planners for a much, much discounted price. I would say I don't think I've ever paid full price for a Happy Planner. I always like to to wait for sales either on the website or at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. Um, so I, I purchase these on sale. You can also pick up planners that are on clearance that are out of date and redate them, especially if you're wanting to try some different layouts. The next tip I have for you as far as Franken planning goes is to think through the order that you want things to appear in your planner. I use a lot of different planners. I start with my catch-all planner always in the front because that is the one that I would reference the most. Um, and then I put my home things right after that because to me it's like my catch-all planner is my home planner, is my family planner, so that all goes together. I also have all my work planners um, that go together in this particular uh Franken plan to planner as well. So what I do is I put all of my home stuff, all of my work stuff, but in between those is where I put my daily planning. And here's my thought process behind that. When I pull out a daily page, I'm generally pulling it out and I'm looking at both sets of planners, the home life side and the work life side, and I'm putting them together on one plan for a day. And so I like to have my daily planning pages in between those two particular sections of my planner. Then after that, then it gets into some more note sections and journaling and kind of some more what I would call fun sections of my planner. Um, so I kind of think through how my day goes, how my day evolves, and how um, what layout might work the best. You certainly can just put them in whatever order, but for me it makes a lot of sense to have them in a particular order and to follow that order month to month. If you do like to Franken plan like I do, which is really just combining multiple planners together to um, put together a planner that works for you um, and it starts to get too big. That's what happened to me when I first started in 2023. Um, this is when I've started combining my home and my work planner. Normally I would keep those separate. Normally they would both be Franken planned but I would keep them separate. However, I have found myself going to lots of different activities, kids activities, sports games, just a lot of different places where I actually want my planner because I have time to sit down and work in it. And I didn't want to carry multiple planners around with me. So it made sense to have it all in one, which for me is why all of mine's combined. However, when I first started, it was really thick. It had a lot going on. And so if it ends up being too thick, you might need to separate it out. Um, I've definitely considered kind of having a 
creative planner, almost like a, um, what I would call like a fun planner, like a fun activity planner, um, separate so that I could take that separately and just have home and work. And I've also considered pulling work out again as well. Um, so you just want to see what works for you. I happen to not like expander discs. They're not my favorite. It feels really bulky to me. Um, and so being able to put mine back on classic discs, I started on expander discs in January putting them back on a classic size disc has worked super well and it's definitely something that I want to continue. So if I have to adjust how much goes in this planner just to keep it in um, on these classic size planner discs, then that is important to me. So you just need to consider how big are you willing your willing for your planner to get and that will tell you how many planners you're able to combine at once. My last tip for Franken planning is to be flexible. Just continue to be flexible. That's one of the beauties of Franken planning is that you can change things up, move things around. Just because you've chosen one specific way to do it, maybe in January, maybe in July, does not mean you have to continue to do that throughout. And for me, that's the fun of resetting my planner every month. I can change things up. I can use dashboards one month and not use dashboards another month. I can change the order of things. I can determine what's going to work best for me in that particular month. And um, I have found a lot of success with that, which is one of the reasons I will continue to Franken plan for a long time because I like the flexibility that it provides. Okay, so now that I have my planner all put together, I combined all of the different elements, different layouts that I use for different things. I put them all into one planner. I use one month at a time in my particular Franken planner. Um, I know several people that do a couple months at a time or maybe three months at a time. It depends again on how much you're combining. Now I'm gonna work on my monthly layout for the month of April, starting with putting this washi border around it. That's something I'm doing for all of 2023 because for me, it really makes those pages pop and I have pulled out the brand new Spoonful of Faith sticker book from the Happy Planner. It was part of their spring release. I will link it down below. I love, I love Spoonful of Faith. I loved the last release that um, they did in collaboration, that Jenna did in collaboration with the Happy Planner. It's just beautiful and soft, and to me, this one really says spring, and so I was excited to use it for the month of April. Another tip I would have when you are Franken planning is to have some pre-planning element that you move between planners. So you can't see it, it's slightly off screen, but I use the um, glance, the year at a glance where you can um, see all the dates listed in the columns. That is where I pre-plan. That is where I write down dates that are coming up months and months in advance. Um, and I use it, I use that particular calendar for that purpose. And then I just transfer that between planners every month. So I'm still able to look farther than a month ahead. I'm able to write things on a calendar. I'm able to book appointments all of that business, but I don't have to put it on my main monthly calendar or on a particular week. I can keep it in that um, kind of look at the year ahead calendar that jumps from month to month with me. So um, that helps my Franken planning kind of stay consistent and still gives me the ability to plan ahead, which of course, when you're booking appointments and when you have meetings and things like that, that come up, you know, when I'm writing out all of my kids sports and things like that, I need to be able to write it out more than one month ahead. Um, so that really helps me that I'm able to just transfer that um, between each planner every month. Now, when I'm working on my monthly setup, you can see I pulled out some of these monthly boxes. You can tell they're monthly boxes because they're notched out on the side. I pulled them out to highlight a few of the big events, some judging responsibilities and Easter and um, my sister's coming to town, just a few of the big events that are happening in the month. I used those monthly boxes. I used that faux washi from the sticker book um, to denote spring break. I use washi all of the time in my planner when I'm trying to um, write something or highlight something that lasts more than one day. And so that works really well that I can kind of block off the whole week. And visually, it's pretty impactful to remind me that that is the week of spring break. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over here because my sister is coming to visit and staying, obviously, for a few days. So I want to mark her visit over here. And so I'll put that down and then kind of trim it off and then extend it over on the side. I always need these to be really functional. This is where I keep um, our family calendar. This is helps me see when conflicts are coming up because of course we have those events that have been scheduled for a long time. And then you have events that come up 
you know, just on the fly. And so you need to know um, where the conflicts are going to happen. So I definitely don't necessarily plan for like balance over on this particular monthly spread. I just try to make it beautiful, but also you're going to see in just a minute, there's going to be a million boxes all over this page because there's a million things going on. So um, I do end up writing that all out on my monthly. I know not everyone uses their monthly spread like that. Some people like to write out gratitude on their monthly. Some people like to write highlights of the day because they keep their schedule in some different places. For me, this ends up being very functional. And when I'm comparing calendars with my husband, um, this is a really easy way for me to look and see um, what is coming up past the current week that I'm on. So just a little decoration over here. I love some inspirational words in my planner. So the keep showing up, that one is um, just a big quote for me. Um, show up is something that I um, kind of tell myself over and over. I just want to show up in my best energy and um, show up for other people in a big way. And so I loved that that was one of the quotes. And so um, I put that one right up at the top. And then the other one down low says just keep growing, which I think is a so appropriate for the month of April as we are entering spring. And now it's like box o -rama over here. Um, we are putting boxes down for all of the soccer practices and then all of the gymnastics practices and then all the soccer games. It's just all of the things. And I have used or I have grabbed Mojo Jojo's monthly boxes, um, which is fabulous. All of these are sized perfectly. You don't have to use stickers. You could, you know, use markers. You could use pens. You could use highlighters. You could use a whole array of things. Um, I actually ran out of those little skinny boxes in this particular color. So I'm making my own by cutting a slightly larger box down to size, um, which is a fun little trick that you can do to make a box a custom size for you. So we got to get this down for my last, uh, my, not mine, but my <laughs> son's uh, gymnastics practice on this particular Saturday. And then um, a few more boxes to go because there's still some activities and we haven't gotten our baseball schedule yet. So that is definitely something that will be coming up as well. But Go ahead and putting these boxes down. You can tell that I color code the boxes, like all the orange ones are gymnastics, all of the purple are soccer practices, and we're doing gray for soccer games. Um, you can tell that the color code helps me just identify as I'm quickly glancing over this calendar. And now that I have most of the boxes that I'm going to need down, I'm just going to add a little bit more decor. There's actually not a ton of just floral flowers in this book. There's a ton of florals in this book, um, but it's a relatively functional book, this new Beautiful and Brave one from um, Spoonful of Faith. And so I'm definitely cutting apart some of the individual florals that I'm finding at the back so that I can just get a little bit more use of out of them because cutting them in half allows me to use the other half on something else and I can have it peeking out. I love me some quotes. So hey, let's cut apart this frame because I did want some more florals here on the top. I'm going to cut this frame apart so I can have almost like a little floral banner of some sort over here. And then that'll bring those florals up top. And then I'll be able to add um, one last quote just as a little extra inspiration at the beginning of the month when um, I have these boxes that are not numbered because the week starts on a Saturday. So I want to take full advantage of being able to decorate those areas. And that's pretty much going to be it for this monthly spread. I hope that this video gave you some tips for Franken planning. Um, it is a really great way to create a planner that just works really well for all of the parts of your life. And that is what I was looking for when I started Franken planning. And that is definitely what I have found. I will link all of the supplies that I use down below um, and check out the link to the Happy Planner because they did just release the new planners for 2023. And so you can see if some of these layouts might work for you. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you all so much for all of your support. And I hope all of you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative. <music>